Hi, calculus students. Um, I'm going to give you some notes on rectilinear motion. Get it out of your system now. I know it's a funny name. Um, so rectilinear motion is basically motion of a particle or some type of object with respect to time. Okay. So what you're given is a position function. It's a function that tells you the position at any time. It's usually x of t or s of t. All right, that's position. Uh, from that, you can get the velocity and the acceleration, v of t and a and t. Okay. Uh, and what they are, I'm going to step out of frame for a second is the derivative and the second derivative. So if you know the position, you take the derivative, that's the velocity. Take the derivative of that, and that's the acceleration. And you probably know this from physics, any of you physics people. Okay? Um, so let me do a quick example. All right, so here's my first example. The position function is 2t cubed minus 21t squared plus 60t plus 3. Now, they don't always give you this constraint, but they sometimes do. Most of the time they do. Time is greater than or equal to 0 because you have some initial position. Okay? Um, and we don't want to talk about negative time, usually. So anyway, uh, if I know the position, I can easily find the velocity function. What do I need to do? Right, take the derivative. When in doubt, take the derivative. That's, that's the meaning of life, basically, right? So I get 6t squared minus 42t plus 60. That's the velocity at any given time. I could just plug in numbers. And if I want to find the acceleration, I take the derivative of the derivative, or the second derivative. So I'm going to get 12t minus 42. And now I can use these functions to answer questions, like what's going on after 1 second? t equals 1. So position at 1, x of 1 equals 2 minus 21, that's negative 19, plus 60, plus 3. What does that come out to? I did this before. Uh, 44. Just don't want to make a mistake. You guys can check me. Velocity after one second. Okay, so you do 6 times 1 squared minus 42 times 1 plus 60. And I got 24. So I have a positive velocity, by the way. Okay, positive velocity tells you which direction you're moving. All right, you're either moving forward or backward or left or right. Okay, we usually think that this is moving to the right. A positive velocity. If it's negative, you're moving to the left. And then acceleration at t equals 1 would be 12 minus 42. Oh, that's a negative number. Negative 30. Um, which doesn't mean you're slowing down necessarily. Okay? A negative acceleration um, doesn't really mean anything. What you have to do is you have to look at both velocity and acceleration together. Okay? And if they both match, if they're both negative, you're speeding up. All right? And if they're both positive, you're speeding up. But what's happening here? Positive velocity, negative acceleration. If there's any combo where one's plus and one's minus, you're slowing down. And maybe you've heard that in physics before, right? A lot of this overlaps with physics, so sorry about that, non-physics people. But you're slowing down. All right, so that's some information I can find out. What else can I tell? All right, the next question they can ask me is, when is it stopped? So what does that really mean in terms of position, acceleration, velocity? It means, when is the velocity zero? So here's the velocity function. I left it on the board. When does that equal zero? So you solve it. So I factored this. If you factor out a 2, I mean, sorry, a 6, All right, this factors minus 5, minus 2. So your t bar. So after 5 seconds and 2 seconds, the velocity is 0. It's stopped. So that's one important question you can answer. So when they ask you, when did it stop, you set the velocity, which is the first derivative, equal to 0. All right, the next interesting question they can ask is, when is it speeding up and slowing down? So what I was just explaining was you have to look at the signs, plus or minus, of velocity and compare them to acceleration. When they line up, when they're both pluses or both minuses, you're speeding up. When they don't line up, acceleration is positive and the other one's negative or vice versa, you're slowing down. All right? So what I need to do is make a number line for velocity and acceleration and then compare the two and look at separate intervals. All right? So first I'm going to take velocity and set it equal to zero, which I just did, right? So this is the number line for velocity, okay? And I'm going to put t equals 2 and t equals 5. 
That breaks it up into intervals. So I'm going to check out what goes on to the left of 2, and I can use 0. All right? I can, I can plug in 0 still. Just don't plug in a negative number, because we're not talking about negative time. And then plug in maybe 3, and plug in 10, or something you know, big, into the velocity function, which I erased, but you still have it written down. So if you plug in 0 to the velocity function, I'm going to look at mine, you get positive 60. So the velocity is positive. You're moving to the right, or moving forward, depending on how you think about it. Uh, if I plug in 3, uh, I believe you get a negative number. Yeah. And if you plug in 10, you get a positive. And again, I'm plugging into velocity. So these are the signs. What I need to do is compare these to the acceleration. Okay? So what I need to do that I haven't done yet is set the acceleration equal to 0 and find out what its number line is. So I'll do that over here. Acceleration was an easy one to set equal to 0, right? It's uh, 12t minus 42. Set that equal to 0, and you get t equals 42 divided by 12. What is that, 3.5? Right, 7 halves when you reduce. So 3.5. So what does its number line look like? Well, here's 3.5. I just got to check something small and something big, so maybe 0 and 10. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get a negative. And if I plug in 10, I'm going to get a positive. Okay? So now what I've got to do is break this up. So let's say from 0 to 2, what's going on? Right? Where can I make myself some room? We don't need this right now. So the first interval, these number lines really start at 0, both of them. So from 0 to 2, that's the first little interval. What's going on? It's plus and minus, right? So if they don't match, it's slowing down. And what's the next little mini micro interval? From 2 to 3.5, it's minus, minus, right? 2 to 3.5. So that means they're speeding up because the signs match. What's going on after 3.5? So from 3.5 until 5. Okay, it's minus up here on the top one, and it's plus down here on the bottom one. So, again, they're slowing down. And then the last interval is after 5. Okay, so after 5, it's plus plus on both of them. You've got to look at both. So plus plus means speeding up. So there's a summary of where it's slowing down and speeding up. So you need to look at the velocity compared to the acceleration. And the way you do that is set them both equal to 0, solve it to get your critical numbers, 2 and 5, 3.5, plug in test values to find out minus plus, and then look at just the critical intervals. Where do they line up? Where do they not line up? And that tells you whether it's speeding up or slowing down. So the last important question they might ask is, what is the total distance that this particle or object uh, traveled? What's the total distance? So what you need to do is you need to look at the velocity number line that you made. All right? Plus means it's moving forward. Negative means it's going backwards. And then the other positive means it's uh, going to the right. Oh, also they need to give you a boundary. So let's say on 0 to 5. So the first 5 seconds. Okay, they need to tell you that, otherwise it's going to go on for infinity, right? So in the first five seconds, let's see what's happening. Well, it's for two seconds, it's going forward, and then for five seconds, it's going backwards. Okay, so it's kind of going like that. It's spinning around. So what's the total distance? So I need to split it up, and I need to find out what's the distance from zero to two, and then what's the distance from two to five, and add them up using absolute value. All right, because I might get a negative distance here. All right? Which just means it's going the opposite direction. So what's the distance from 0 to 2? So I need to plug that into the position. I need to find that out, and then I need to find out this. So I'm going back to the position function, the original function, and plugging in x of 2 minus x of 0. That's, that's how much it traveled there. And then add to it how much it traveled between 2 and 5. And I did that already, just to save time. Um, 55 minus 3 is 52. So that's how much it traveled in the first two seconds. And then if you plug in 5 and 2, you get 28 minus 55, 
which you'll notice is negative, which is, just means it's going a different direction. Okay? So I want to add up the absolute values, because I want to know how far did it go to the right, and then how far did it go to the left, all together. So you add up the absolute values, and you get 79 units, whatever it is. So this is your final answer. The total distance traveled was 52 to the right, and then 7, 27 to the left. So total was 79. Okay, regardless of direction. So good luck. I can't wait to see you guys on Friday. I know that you really need you know, a math teacher in the classroom. Um, so I hope to see you then, and may the math be with you.